Welcome back to the channel, you curd nerds. We are here at booth uh, 298 with Air EV Toll. Yes, you heard that correctly. That is an electric vertical takeoff and landing. Um, it seats two, as you as you can see, right right there, and uh, about a 500 pound useful load. Given that it is electric, that is full useful load. You, your buddy, your luggage, for about an hour at about 85 knots, completely vertical takeoff and landing. So no runways, no airports or anything like that. Um, but I'll let, I'll let the head honchos tell you more about it. This thing's awesome. Thank you. That really good. Make it a lot more accessible to let a lot more people get into uh, personal aviation by, by, by vertical. By using electricity before vertical takeoff and landing, mm -hmm. by uh, having a fiber wire system that makes it a lot easier to find your experience that in a minute. Okay. Uh, and by without 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 taking the final. So what he said there is by bringing this aircraft to market, he's hoping to bring general and personal aviation to more people by having electric vertical takeoff and landing capabilities attached with a fixed wing to help reduce the electrical load required in cruise. He's also hoping by steering away from a fully composite design that we can, well, reduce production costs. We can ramp up production. According to this interview with him, he was saying that the big hurdle that a lot of these new aircraft manufacturers are hitting is scalability. Everybody's using composites. Everybody's having to use resin. Everybody's using carbon fiber. And it's making it really difficult to start an assembly line. It's making it difficult to mass produce these things like you would a vehicle, like you would a car. And he's hoping to use that same production style, that same assembly line style by using aluminum and steering away from composites, that he can make this thing more accessible and scalable. Exactly. So they told me this thing, um, it'll, it'll do about 85 knots, right? For crews for about an hour, right? Now you say you don't want to take the fun out of it. What are we looking at in like acceleration? Is it going to give me like a sports car feel up there? Cause I see like the sports car bucket seats. Am I going to get that same kind of feeling up there flying it? Yes, you will. Okay. So there's a lot of power here. Okay. It's, it's almost 800 horsepower. Okay. You, you need, you need a lot of power to hover, but once you're in cruise, you only need a small fraction of that so you always have a very large uh, excess of power mm -hmm. so it will climb pretty fast it, it, it can climb technically it could climb at 4,000 feet per minute so this is like uh, uh, you know aerobatic aircraft yeah uh, power we're gonna limit that to probably below that in order to conserve energy and the power system but, but that's that's the case that's what electrical nice. propulsion gives you yes you heard that correctly in excess of 4,000 feet per minute climb good luck getting that out of a cessna now i remember you were telling him the price range for something like this is like entry level single engine so less than that less than that so i mean a Cessna 172 with like a G1000, you're looking at around 400 to 700 K, depending on, you know, do you want the leather seats, the airbags, etc. So you're, you're aiming under that 400. Yes. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a pretty good deal for something that I could take to and from the office. We've, from, from the beginning, from the, 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 the very first uh, steps in, in the design of the production version of this aircraft cost, has been uh, one of the most one of the, of the leading factors there because what we're trying to do again we're trying to remove the barriers that prevent most people from getting into private and personal aviation one of these barriers is cost and the uh, and another barrier is the ability to scale up production mm -hmm. i'm talking to a lot of companies who are selling aircraft here in oshkosh and other places most of them are in a situation where they have uh, a waiting list for for, for for a year, for two years, for three years, for four years, they're not able to ship aircraft fast enough. That's what blocking this industry, that's what driving the prices up. And we're, we're, we're trying to, to fix that from the beginning. Now, how is he going to keep those costs down? I mean, for heaven's sakes, 
a brand new Cessna is half a million dollars, and you're telling me that a brand new aircraft is going to cost less than that? Let's let him explain how he's going to keep those costs down. So we're, we're for example, we're uh, limiting the use of of, of, of of composite materials because we know that uh, production of composite materials is a lot harder to scale up. It's a lot harder to certify in, in, in the types of certified route as well. We're using a lot of aluminum, and we're still keeping the weight down. And with everything we do, we're always looking into technologies which will allow scaling up production in terms of, of quantities of aircraft. And, and we want that scale up to, uh, to allow us to reduce the cost, okay? Because many aircraft today are designed in a way that even if, you, if you're trying to scale up, you usually need to build another factory next to the existing one. You're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not bringing the cost per unit down when you're doing that because you're doubling everything. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if, if you have uh, an airframe that is, is, is designed so that it can be uh, manufactured with, uh, with with less with less uh, you know manual labor, with uh, with with in an assembly line which is a lot more similar to what you see in the automotive world. Then once you have enough orders, you you can scale up to the, those techniques and then and then you, you're driving the price per unit down. Uh, All right, now course, enough so of me talking ahead, about it you know, and showing you know, B-roll. He's actually got a simulator, a VR simulator okay, okay. for this multi-rotor aircraft. You decide what you're going to call it. And I'm actually going to hop in and fly this thing. Now, I do have experience flying uh, multi-rotors. I used to race FPV drones probably about a decade ago. Uh, now they're way too fast and way too expensive for me. But this thing flies a little bit differently than a drone. I kept reaching for controls that I would expect in an FPV drone. And here he is explaining all the different flight modes and how this thing is incredibly safe and intuitive. And what you'll see is that it's a lot simpler to operate than any other aircraft. There are no rudder pedals. You fly it with a single joystick and pulling a trigger and pushing one button. There's not a whole bunch of levers, knobs, switches, pulleys. It's set up. It is a simple fly-by-wire, press this button to get into cruise mode, press this button to get into hover mode, press this button to establish yourself on a three-degree wide path. Yes, you heard that correctly. Gone are the days of actually having to power for descent a pitch for airspeed. You press a button, you point to get at a runway, it will take you to that runway. As long as that runway is really just roughly a three-degree path. Where you, or point the multi rotor what this where you want it to go. And it's more than that. And you'll see it when you do there. Okay. So aviation. it still feels like something that Imagine how weird it would be for a controller to go, didn't take hey, the, uh, okay. do you, boo boo? Um, I got no idea. It's going to be interesting. I fly the Airbus, say, hey, and the now, Airbus I'm flies good. like a video game. Okay. So it feels like this is going to be a pretty pretty weird mix between aircraft and multi rotor. So to swap between modes, trigger. Uh, no, pattern. trigger is for cruise, and this one's back to hover through approach. Okay. You once you're low enough, it will automatically go into hover. If you want to go to hover before that, you take the stick all the way back, and then it will go to hover immediately. That's it. And it okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like an aborted take or an aborted it's, landing. If you're approaching someone and you're overshooting and you have something in front of you, you take the stick all the way back, it will start climbing, but it will also go to hover. Okay. That's. So it's it's that's intuitive. It's like oh shit. That's the idea. Um, that's that's pretty genius. All right, let's uh. And show this out. I'll put you some. Reset the position. Sorry. All right. Okay, just look forward for a minute. I'm gonna reset the view. That's it. Is that good? Okay. You can take off. Press with your thumb up. Okay. Oh, that is. So now I'm in hover mode. It's gonna hang out here. Yeah. So I can go forward. It'll give me some tilt. You can, and it, you can twist it and you can change heading. Yeah. Once you get to go, 
center the stick and press the trigger once. And that will send me towards cruise mode. Yeah, which is which is a simple pitch trim. Yeah. Oh, and it just nothing tilts, nothing changes in the aircraft. It's like a drone. Oh, now once you have speed, I don't know. If you pull back, you will climb. If you push forward, you'll die. And you already figure out how to Now. How do I get, how do I go faster? Like I'm in crew. Trigger for a few seconds and you see, you see that trim down, okay, we'll let it go, and you're good. Oh. This is your maximum. It will take you to around one, one ten months. Oh, it'll take me up to about, yeah, I'm seeing on my airspeed tape, red line is 120, so it'll keep me below that. Uh, I'm seeing, I pull the trigger, the aircraft pitches down. But you're at the maximum now. I'm at the max now. If you want to go back to optimum speed, you, you, you give it a short press one more time, and it will trim up. Exactly. Huh. That is, that is pretty intuitive. Um, now, I'm seeing these green bars down here on the middle display. These are your four batteries. So they're, they're separate, one battery for each unit. So you have four separate power systems in this aircraft, four batteries. Each battery is powering two motors that, uh, that are on opposite quarters. Oh. A complete power system, you still have a motor at each corner, and, and, and you're good. I can simulate that failure if you want. Yeah, yeah, kill one of my batteries. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I need to take you out to a oh. You want to do it later? Yeah, we'll do it later. So let's um, so this looks like Oshkosh. It is. Okay, yeah, I was like, I recognize this. You know, I could definitely see how this would be, this would be nice if I lived in these little houses and neighborhood and whatnot and I needed to do like... You want to land in a backyard in one of these houses? Sure, let me see if I can find one I like. Um, I live a little far from here. I'm about an hour flight in my airplane up north, so it's a bit of a journey. <laughs> so. Point the aircraft to it somewhere in uh, a little bit further. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a green patch. Right yeah. You. And I'll press press this once and keep the stick centered. And give it a minute. Keep it centered. It reduces speed and it's going into an approach mode. Okay. I go to reduce speed. And once it's, it's found the right speed, it will go into an approach mode. And you can see that you're heading toward the spot right between your two feet. And you can yaw in order to adjust that. Oh. You can pull the stick back a little if you want it shallower. You can push it forward if you want it steeper. Oh, that is a super intuitive way to land. Now, if I w I'm seeing trees, I'm like, ah, no, I can't do this. That's it. And now it stops you and me there. Now you're hovering here. And the aircraft is waiting for you to either press the trigger and go around or find a place where you find a suitable landing. Oh. So, uh, that's pretty funny, there's a 7-Eleven over there. I am kind of curious if I could land on the roof of that 7-Eleven. I'm not sure that uh, houses are probably going to spend on it. We can land in the, in the junction here. In, oh, this intersection? Yeah, this intersection seems like a pretty good spot. I would... No, just hold it down to the stick center and it will, it will send you down to the That, now, does this taxi? It's like a, it will taxi at the, the sea area it the sim it doesn't that is that is pretty nice because like that could very easily be my house right there and i guess i could get an ice cold beer and go home now after flying my drone from work <laughs> that is that is pretty awesome do you want to do we want to do the um that motor failure now as you can tell by the simulator and well 
them actually having a functioning prototype that you're seeing right here. This thing is an absolute unit and I would absolutely love to own one. At the price point of under the price of a Cessna and you're getting a reasonable mode of transportation that you can take off from the intersection near your house, land it in the parking lot of your office and go to work, yeah, sign me up. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you got any other comments or questions, of course, leave them down below. And as always, keep it cheesy.